we got ourselves another Gigguk video for ReZero. ReZero is no masterpiece, but it's still damn entertaining. Ooh, it's not a masterpiece, huh? Well, it depends on what you define as masterpiece. I thought it was like a solid minimum like 9 out of 10 for ReZero Season 1. And honestly, I don't think I'm really glazing based on what I've seen compared to the competition that's out there. Like, I've seen Mushoku Tensei. I've seen Tensur, I've seen every one of these, and now I just saw ReZero. And with that comparison in mind, I feel like it's still, like, minimum 9 out of 10. Let's see what Giga has to say. Hey guys, it's ReactsBoy89, and today, I'm gonna yeah. be watching this video called Try Not To Suffer Hardest Edition. And, well, I'm already scared because I'm really bad at not suffering. I mean, like, I suffer at everything. But, okay. hey, yeah, let's get on with the video, shall we? Come on, ReactsBoy89. <laughs> Episode 7. 15. 7. Man, what a fucking tryhard. So, the hottest anime to come out this year thus far has finally come okay. to an end, and everyone is talking about it. Re Zero, anime of 2016. It's the new season of Everybody Loves Rey Amelia, and Rem is the second coming of fucking Christ, apparently. And as with any big show, the Re Zero hype train has been running wild for the past two seasons. But how well does it stand up to the hype that it's gotten this year? Well, what if it got? you've read the title of this video, you probably already know, but let's pretend a single sentence doesn't sum up my entire opinion, alright? We're introduced to the world of ReZero, a stereotypical fancy world complete with everything you need from your usual fancy settings. Let's see, yeah. do we have bright colors, Check. magic, Check. humanoid beings that look like animals, chivalrous knights who look like they belong mm -hmm. in K-pop groups, Definitely. Check. Witches and an cults. innocent princess to serve as the main love interest, Check. an array of waifus that are way better but have no chance of winning, <laughs> Check. a sexy cat lady you're attracted to who you're told cat has boy. a penis, uh, Check. And an unlikely hero who is transported to said world. Yes, yeah, so unlikely hero this time is Subaru, a self-proclaimed otaku who is introduced to this world to do some thing by some time. But the twist is that he has the power to reset his life to a regression point of time every time he dies. Kinda like a video game. Exactly like a video game. The reset mechanics even come complete with checkpoints in the form of a buff Irishman offering you apples every time Subaru makes it past an the Is the Alpha guy really a stereotypical Irish guy? He made this joke in the ReZero in 8 minutes as well. I don't really know the stereotype of Irishmen, other than they drink a lot. Achievement. What actually counts as a checkpoint is some thing defined by some one. And that's pretty much all I- We still don't really know how the checkpoints are set, right? We have some ideas, but there hasn't been a direct confirmation. It seems to be like there's an over you need to overcome some sort of challenge, right? Appa guy was initially set for whatever reason, because, you know, we need to have a starting point. Then after, you know, clearing the loot seller arc with, you know, arc one against Elsa, then we spawn, <laughs> not spawn, but the checkpoint is in the mansion. But the interesting about the arc two checkpoint is that it's not as soon as Subaru passes out and then wakes up in the mansion. No, 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 no. He passes out from the loot seller. He's transported to Roswell's mansion. He wakes up, but the checkpoint isn't set yet. And then he goes, talks to Betty, calls her a drill lolly. Betty sucks the mana out, distorts, you know, kind of quote-unquote tortures, right? And then Subaru passes out, then he wakes up again, and that time with Rem and Ram, that is the checkpoint. So it's kind of like confusing. I don't think there's like a specific rule just yet, but the vague idea is, there's like this, there, there is this overall challenge that you need to overcome in each arc, and after that, at some point, a checkpoint will happen. I can say because I have about as much of an idea of what the central themes of the plot are in the last episode as I did in the first episode, but I'll get back to that. See, what ReZero is about is the journey that Subaru takes to get past whatever obstacle comes his way, often having to die repeatedly to figure out the correct thing to do. So you yep. see all those comments you see on the internet telling Subaru to FUCKING KILL YOURSELF! They're just trying to offer- It's easy to say that, because you've probably been exposed to regression shows where the main character treats life and death as just nothing. By just continuously killing yourself and redoing, you kind of remove this psychological component, right? Maybe you could say that the person became so numb to dying and suffering that they can just abuse it, but I really do like how they really delve into the inner psyches of how he suffers and he doesn't want to die because it's terrifying to die. It's, it hurts to die. So in that way, Tape has created this way of quote unquote, balancing the regression power so that Subaru doesn't arbitrarily just end himself, or at least that's what I've seen in season one. For some form of genuine advice. Probably. Literally fucking kill yourself though. The first thing that really stands out about this show- 
really hates Subaru, huh? It's surprisingly dark and gory content, which contrasts the saturated colors and bright tone the series initially gives off. Yet it manages to pull this off without ever feeling too out of place or edgy. It's not teen angst we're dealing with here, and it's not violence for the sake of violence either. Mm. It does well to highlight the fact that the act of dying is not a pretty thing. Showing absolutely right, the show is not just some happy-go-lucky show. It takes itself very seriously. Are there some slice of life, cute, funny moments? Absolutely. But it takes itself extremely seriously, and I enjoy that. That's why Subaru doesn't want to off himself whenever there's just the slightest hint of trouble. But the series truly starts to shine during the second half when the mechanics of the time reset are used to the greatest effect. And what effect is this? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Subaru, ReZero does a wonderful job of setting up the worst possible scenarios for Subaru to go through, as we see him suffer episode upon episode with seemingly nothing ever going right for him, and every decision he makes leading to more despair, which mm -hmm. is luckily signaled by a very useful sound effect every time something bad happens, in case the viewer couldn't tell that the bloodied corpse on the floor with his gut spilled out everywhere Rum is probably a sign that something bad is about to happen. But thanks for letting me know anyway, anime. It was really useful. <laughs> what? What's happening? <laughs> okay. Like, where are you going with this joke? Like, are you shitting on, like, signal cues being kind of boring and, like, you know, it's, like, spoon-feeding you? No, no, no. We go with the empty toilet paper joke. Oh, no! 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 It's all about the suffering that Subaru goes through because people he cares for are murdered, tortured, and he goes through some horrific events. And it works because thanks to the time reset, you can put your character through multiple traumatic events with no consequence to the overall plot. And thanks to the multiple reset, one more time. Through multiple traumatic events with no consequence to the overall. No consequences. Has there really been no consequences? In season one. Let me think about this for a real second. Yes, when we do fuck up, but we can reset, right? We can reset. There hasn't, like, I'm still waiting for a moment where someone significant dies and then a checkpoint is made. Therefore, you cannot regress. Honestly, no, 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 no. Let's take it back. Let's take it back. No consequences to the plot, right? But don't you think that when Amelia ran out on Subaru, deservingly, Subaru fucked up. Right? He showed the lowest of the low. He showed his true self of how selfish and egotistical he is. And he told Amelia, you have a debt you could never pay me back. And Amelia left. And then a checkpoint was made. That is a consequence, right? I think the whole... Art, of course, that's, that's, that is a pretty huge significance. But it's not like there's no consequences, right? Sure, you can regress and try over and over again. But sometimes, checkpoints are made after significant fuck-ups. And now you have to live with those consequences. Thank you, Regison, with the Prime Man. Plot. And ReZero definitely pushes this concept to the limits. Every mechanic is present to invoke the most drama possible, leading to some very emotional and shocking moments throughout the show. Because even though we know that everything can be reset upon death, it doesn't detract from the fact that Subaru has to experience all these things happening. Absolutely. Every run is not cheap. I know that Subaru can regress and do fine, right? But let's take that one episode, for example. Episode 23, I think. That's the most heroic run, where Subaru is at the finish line. We seemingly defeated Better Goose and all the fingers, and Amelia is about to meet Subaru. And then what happens? Better Goose's soul goes into Subaru, and Subaru realizes and runs away, right? But like, the entire run, I didn't feel was cheap. It was such a good way to portray such a heroic self, and I don't think that there's been any run where I thought, this is meaningless, we can just simply redo this, it doesn't matter. I feel like every run has an intentional purpose, lessons to learn, and it builds off of that. To him, ...and that everyone aside from him doesn't know that the events can be reset, as this is their reality and they act that way. So while the mechanics do work like a game, it certainly never does feel like it's one, not cheap. as it's never as simple as just pressing a reset button on the menu. We really feel for him as we essentially see a character mentally and physically beaten down repeatedly, but it does make for one hell of a gripping ride even if I don't know what do you say? Seven years ago. Seven years ago, I don't think the term grippers was common in relation to toes. So I think this is a coincidence right now. Pretty feel for him as we essentially see a character mentally yeah. and physically beaten down repeatedly. But yeah. it does make for one hell toes? of a gripping ride, even if I... 
I think that's a coincidence. I don't know what kind of shit he did to deserve all this happen to him. Seeing Subaru slowly transform from the bright, optimistic person he was originally to the full-on mental breakdown is what really makes it such an endearing watch. As Yes, right? Because in the beginning, he didn't really take this shit seriously, right? He was so... I don't know, excited, like, oh, new isekai world, do I have a magic power? I don't, I'm Natsuki Subaru, wow, right? But then after the first couple deaths, I think he starts to realize, like, okay, this is getting serious. But even, like, beating Elsa, how triumphant he was, he was, like, true Giga Chat. Arc 1 Subaru, not many things went wrong, but a lot of things did go right, and he truly popped off. But in Arc 2, you get to slowly see it all crumble down, right? The stress builds up as he realizes that, like, Anything he does is suspicious, and all the girls, like Rem Ram, Biko even, like Betrigus, I sorry, um, Roswell, they're all very suspicious of him because a random dude showed up to help Amelia. He also has a thick stench of the witch. So, and then you get to see how much of those moments never mattered to Rem and Ram, right? The personal moments, and he cries out and says, what am I supposed to do? What can I do? That episode 7 breakdown was so, so impactful, but it is kind of crazy to see how Natsuki Subaru started out here until, you know, just pure suffering later on. Probably episode 15 being the highest of the suffering point in season 1. ...he was originally to the full-on mental breakdown is what really makes it such an endearing watch, as morbid as that sounds. As a character, Subaru, whether you think he's likable or not, is what carries this show. Is he a likable character? He can be. But not always, and I think it's better that way. He's supposed to be a normal 17-year-old kid. And the normal people have flaws. Human beings are irrational, stupid creatures. We may know what to do, but sometimes our instincts overrides that. And Subaru, you can see how clad he is with like pride, envy, greed, wrath, whatever, the seven deadly sins. This is a component of the show that's continuously iterating. Not only are the witches based off the sins, there's archbishops, but he himself even mentions these sins. In episode one, Subaru, I think, said like once or twice about like, how he's a prideful person. You can see how these things consume him. And as he gets over these sins, right, he then actually proceeds and I think, I think it's just great storytelling. For all intents and purposes, the world he's thrown into is a pretty cliche fantasy world with cliche characters to boot. Yeah. But Subaru himself is a breath of fresh air from the usual otaku protagonist who is transported into a fantasy world where he becomes a hero of some sort with no trouble at all. Exactly. What is the point of... Well... I know what the point of those shows are. I've seen plenty of those shows. I've, I'm sure I've watched more of those shows than, you know, shows like uh, ReZero where the main character, even though he may have an OP power, he doesn't just solve everything easily, right? It's not so fun if the entire plot is main character is so OP that he just rolls through everything and there's no struggle. I think the best type of format for if you want to have a character like that you need to do it like Eminence in Shadow or One Punch Man style where, yes, the main character can solve everything perfectly, but remove them. Remove them from the core combat or the core problem. Have side characters that are so compelling, that struggles, and then use them to make you struggle and have some level of stakes on it, and then bring in the main character and solve everything every end. But if you just have the main character just steamroll, from the beginning, it's just like, it'll be fun for like the first couple episodes, but if you're the, if you're over the age of like, nine, I think this shit's gonna get so boring, and that's what makes ReZero so special. Natsuki Subaru continuously fucks up. He doesn't know what he's doing. And he, and he's just, sometimes he's just hitting rock bottom, right? Arc 3, that was so painful. From the beginning, until like episode 18 of Arc 3. Bro, that shit was pure despair. All we're doing is fucking up, burning bridges, messing up. But it's so real, it's so raw, because it's just a dumb 17 year old kid meat that has no understanding of how anything works here, fumble around. And a part of that, while it may seem unlikable and annoying, it's great story writing, and then, due to the redemption he has afterwards, the contrast between how, fell, how far he fell versus how high he can go, it's amazing. He considers himself a hero initially, in a grand scheme of things, Subaru is almost entirely powerless compared to everyone else. He has a tremendous amount of character flaws, and he slowly realizes he is not the grand hero he thinks he is when the show makes this abundantly clear by the amount of trials he has to go through to achieve anything. His only weapons are the knowledge he gains on every cycle and his positive outlook on life, which is shown that 90% of the time means absolute 
dick. With those times when everything does come together and things work, it's, it's beautiful. remarkably satisfying. And the series does a great- Yeah, and you know why it's satisfying? Because we suffered. We've been there at its lowest. But the lows are as low as the highs are as high. And remember this line. If everyone's super, then no one is super. This is a line from Incredibles. You might think it's cringe. It's from Syndrome. But that line is very true. If you're always just popping off and just like doing everything well, that shit gets boring real quick. I'd much rather have a flawed character that fucks up and learns from his mistakes and then pops off rather than a dude that's just Jesus Christ all the way through job of making you feel that you ride the roller coaster of emotions with subaru and it's one hell of a ride with many ups and downs which brings me to my main criticism of the show because mm. after going through that exhilarating ride after seeing subaru suffer all right <laughs> about half the video is done now we're done with the glaze right the glaze portion is done now what does giga really feel about ReZero. Time and time again, learn from his mistakes and satisfyingly find the correct path through the obstacles. After all that, you finally get off the suffering train and look back at the ride you just took and you're left wondering <sighs> what exactly was the point of all What was the point? The point is for him to learn all the things that he didn't have. And the point of all those regressions and loops is for Subaru to fuck up to learn from those lessons, but not only that, due to the regression mechanic, you're able to go through different plot lines and have different characterizations of different characters that you would never even see. For example, Episode 7 Rem and Episode 18 Rem. They're two separate characters. One is torturing Subaru and then healing him at the same time to make sure that he is conscious enough to get more information out. Episode 18, she is a cuck queen telling Subaru Go chase after Amelia. I still love you. You're my hero, right? Of course, this is an exaggerated comparison, but you can see due to these loops, not only is there a component of Subaru learning from his mistakes and getting better, but different characters are portrayed in different lights, which makes them so much more interesting. For that, looking a bit closer at the series as a whole, ask yourself this. What exactly were the central themes of the plot? What, what is the themes of the plot? The themes of the plot is a main character that is so consumed by the seven deadly sins, which is also a different theme of the show through the witches and the cults and stuff. And every time he fucks up, it's usually because he's consumed by these elements. And then he has the awareness to override them and then go through more virtuous sides. For example, the first run, so much pride and ego. But then he gives that shit up. He asks for help. Reinhardt clutches. Even in arc two as well, right? What happened? We asked Biku for help. And that's when everything starts to get better and better, right? Pride isn't the only thing, but the story is about a dude that is so flawed and is so egotistical and narcissistic. Maybe narcissistic, yeah. And for many people to be able to relate to and then see him go through this transformation to become better. What was ReZero actually about? I mean, fuck, in one show, we have the Antiques Roadshow, Hayate the Dickhead Butler, CSI Mansion, Rembo, the British Royal Family, Fantasy Isis, and the adventures of Moby Dick. Sure, you can reduce all these different components of the story through memes, but I don't think that they're out of place. In fact, all these different things that you just reduce down to random memes are the components that adds up to such an in-depth world building that got me immersed to the show from episode one. Without anything really tying it all together, there is nothing really driving the plot for Subaru aside from worship Amelia and try not to die. The plot? What do you mean? He got himself tangled up with Amelia's stuff because he's simping. Then there's this bigger plot of the cult, the day of the ordeal. And the goal is to make sure Amelia's safe. But due to the events that happens at the Capitol in Arc 3, Amelia's gone, right? I'm talking specifically about Arc 3 right now. But Arc 2 pretty less, more or less is the same. Of everything, it's always about saving Amelia because he loves her. You could maybe argue that the royal selection and the witch's resurrection is the central driving force. But yes. those are only really background events to everything that is actually going on. What do you mean background events to everything that's going on? And in the entire series, no real progress is made towards either of those plot points. We killed the Archbishop of Sin Sloth. One Archbishop is down. I'm assuming there's five more Archbishops left. That is progress if we think that the cult is the main antagonist force. In terms of the plot with Amelia and Subaru's relationship, Amelia may see Subaru more than just a fucking stray pet dog by the end. 
I think there's plenty of progress. The entire plot seemed to be completely reactive rather than proactive. Reactive than proactive. Can you give me an example of that? At the beginning of each arc, you really had no idea where the plot was going, and that includes what could happen in the second season. Instead, it felt more like the author was thinking of every possible way to trigger some event to make Subaru suffer as much as possible. But it's not arbitrary or random suffering. The suffering comes with the lesson, and usually the sufferings are due to his fault that led to him suffering. I fail to see how this is actual criticism of the show. It never feels as natural as other dark shows that sees characters going through hardship because as I said, Such there's like no what? real rhyme or reason for the suffering as everything that happens is entirely reactive. No, 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 no. There's a specific reason as to why Subaru suffers in each run. And again, it ties back with the themes of the seven deadly sins. I feel like maybe a lot of people watching this shit like in the, from the beginning weren't as sweaty as me and didn't understand or pick up on the themes of these sins, right? Of a normal human f being consumed by these sins, which is such a very relatable thing. Like, all the sufferings is not random or arbitrary. These are not random events to just, just invoke some sort of shock reaction from the audience, right? Let's think about this. Let's think about, like, all the suffering. Well, in arc one, you know, Elsa cutting up Subaru there. I guess you could say it's a bit of pride because, like, Subaru, every, he wanted to do everything by himself rather than ask out for help like Reinhardt. Arc 2, Subaru was trying so hard to, you know, get close to Rem and Rem, but by doing so, he was so suspicious. And again, it's all that ego of wanting him to prove himself, right? He wants to protect everyone in the mansion. He wants that recognition, but he doesn't even realize that this, you yourself are the fucking uh, source of the suspicions and Roswell and it basically wants to kill you and Ram says chill but Rem can smell that shit and she goes off on it right like I feel like all the sufferings has a direct reason that ties in with Subaru's fault as a human being and he overcomes them by learning from his mistakes after suffering in the end you just kind of expect something to go wrong to make Subaru suffer because why the hell not it's happened every time before but apart from that we're cool right I mean all the characters are fine and everything no, 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 I don't think you actually understood the point of the suffering and you were just saying that these are just random edgy moments to get shock value. Like, all of us who watched it had no problems with anything the characters did or anything, right? No! <laughs> no, I want the other thing. Come on, I know it's just dangling up a few times. Let me hear it just once, please. <laughs> Yes, as far as characters goes, most of them had their own unique quirks and tropes that were nothing that we hadn't seen before, but the variety of character interactions were enough to keep them from being bland and unforgettable without the need of being fleshed out. But Giga- I thought that every character introduced, even if they had limited moments, even like Priscilla for example, everyone felt not like a static flat character and it feels like, again, like an onion where already it's good but you keep peeling back the layers and you get to see there's more depth to it. I think that Priscilla didn't have a lot of time to shine, but even then she was kind of interesting. Anastasia and Krush definitely had a lot more time to shine, and Krush honestly really goes to show how amazing of a leader she is, how she goes into the front lines and even like charges on behalf of the army, inspiring speeches, combat. It's, it's pretty cool, but I don't know. I feel like uh, all the characters are not just random characters with cool designs. They all have a specific purpose and some hints at like rich history and lore. But Gigguk, isn't Rem best girl? How dare you not recognize the brilliance that is Rem? Rem is life, Rem is love, just look at her! Re-Zero, more like Rem Zero, am I right? Well of course Rem is best girl, she is winner by fucking default because no other character even had the chance of doing something of any significance apart from her, which is a sh- mm, yeah, I think that season one, Rem had obviously a lot more moments to shine, right? Just for example, like, the example I gave with the real candidates, Priscilla didn't have any lines. It's not her time to shine. Her time to shine is going to be apparently in arc three, right? For season one, absolutely. I don't understand why everyone loves Rem so much. Rem's had a significant impact on Subaru as well. It's a shame because the cast was filled with plenty of as interesting, if not more so, characters that never got the same amount of screen time as Rem did. Besides, the amount of Beatrice we got in the second half of the show was disgustingly non-existent. That's true. Vehicle's gone, man. We don't got no vehicle. Maybe vehicle will have a huge arc in season two, though. I suppose. But this never really was about the rest of the cast. As with shows like Steins Gate, you'll always have problems with developing characters when a show has a time loop structure, since relationships are constantly being reset and it's mainly up to the main character to carry all the developments. See, I feel like this time loop structure 
it's not really about resetting the characters. Of course, in the timeline that Subaru is successful in, those characters will be set in stone with the personality trait, right? For example, Episode 18 Rem and Episode 7 Rem, right? Completely different characters. But due to the regression mechanic, we're able to see more of different sides of characters, even though, yes, in the, in the successful runs, they are set into a specific way. I don't necessarily think that means it's being reset. I honestly think that the regression mechanic just makes every character so much more in-depth, so much more vibrant and dynamic himself so while i've mentioned all the good things about subaru as a character and how his development is what makes the show such an endearing watch my okay. biggest gripe is that his central driving force for anything he does amelia 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 why because a dumb 17 year old neat horny teenager that says nothing with his life fucking piece of shit showed up here and the first person to actually kind of save him was Amelia and the lap pillow in Arc 2. For those reasons, I think it does make sense why a dumb 17-year-old would chase after this half-elf girl. It's stupid, but 17-year-olds are stupid. Same with their perception of love. His love for Amelia makes no goddamn sense. I agree, but again, if you ex listen to what I just said, it kind of actually does make sense. We're given very little reason as to why he fell so deeply in love pretty much immediately. Especially yep. when she doesn't even stand. He folded immediately, right? He folded immediately as soon as he saw Amelia. It was like love at first sight, which I don't think is a real thing. You can't love someone at first sight. You see their physical appearance and that's just fucking lust. But regardless, she was there against the three bandits when no one was helping out. She then gave him lap pillow in arc two. He just loves her because she's so hot and he sh she seemingly saved him. And you can say it's stupid, you can say it's delusional, but I think that a 17 year old is stupid and delusional. Stand out from the rest of the female cast. I mean, sure, she's the first one to help him out and yep. she's nice and- uh... yep. Hey, you don't talk about Amelia like that, okay? You see this smile? I'm ready to fucking propose because of this smile. He just wants to see her smile. Oh. And she can smile. Fucking yay. It's a problem because pretty much every action he takes in the entire course of the series revolves around her. He yep. blindly white knights her harder than a horny- Yep, he white knighted harder than the actual white knight in the fucking room. Teenager at a gamer girl convention. And because of this, the final few episodes of the show suffer. As instead of building up to a proper emotional climax, it kind of just feels cheesy and forced. And are you an absolute- the final couple episodes felt cheesy and forced. I felt like it was the perfect closure for the Subaru that, you know, the disgusting Subaru that we saw that made the disgusting faces and told Amelia you have a debt you could never pay back. And Amelia is saying, you never were doing this for me. It's all about for yourself, right? And then after all the events of Arc 3 and he understands all the wrongdoings he's done, he saves Amelia and they have a beautiful scene underneath the flugel tree, the lap pillow, right? Maybe not directly underneath the tree, but around it. And then he goes on to tell her about how he was wrong, about how at the end of the day, I was doing it for myself, but I still want to be by her side. And Amelia, this girl, still doesn't really understand what love means, but she feels happy from it. And I feel like we're making progress. And it doesn't seem forced. The only thing that seems forced is when Subaru said the cringe line of Baby girl, slowly but surely, I'll make sure you're gonna fall in love with me. Then we said, uh-oh, Natsuki Subaru, the groomer. That was kind of forced. Yes, I agree. But the author might be cooking because, again, Amelia has no understanding of what love is. After watching Frozen Bond, it makes even more sense. She's like this mountain girl that has no fucking, like, uh, common understanding of the birds and the bees. She's never had a sex ed class. She doesn't know how babies are made. She's way too pure. And then to have this like neat from Japan show up that's so aware of different tropes and shit because even in the first fucking seconds of episode one, he was mocking a couple, kind of, while reading a shoujo manga saying, oh, this is where this is going to happen. So the author may be cooking here with the quote-unquote forced way Subaru is trying to make Amelia fall in love with him, but... I'm not completely sure if Gigak is talking about what I'm talking about. 
fucking idiot, Subaru! Overall, though, ReZero was an enjoyable ride throughout and one I definitely recommend watching. Despite the flaws with its characters and plot, the staff have done a fantastic job with the source material they were given, resulting in a show that looks great, well, sounds Blazing. great, and to its credit, contains one of the best episodes of anime I've seen in a while that 15. had my jaw on the floor. It's definitely not as deep or as fleshed out as it pretends to be as once the It's not as deep or as fleshed out as it pretends to be. Maybe I just haven't watched that many deep anime, man. Maybe I'm just a dumb monkey watching too many garbage, trash, isekai power fantasies. And now that I finally got something that seems deep, and I'm thinking to myself, oh my god, this shit's so deep. But at the end of the day, it's just shallow work. Maybe I'm cooked, guys. The shock of every event wears off, there's nothing much else to carry it. But that doesn't stop it from being really entertaining when you're watching it. So yeah, that was pretty much it. But if, like me, you're tired of seeing Best Car Subaru suffer so much, and just wished he'd save us all the hassle and just jump off the planet already so he can restart again, well, I've just figured out the perfect way to cheat the system. What? <laughs> Death now? <laughs> Write his name? <laughs> Wait, what was on the first page? My dignity in Harambe memes. Okay. <laughs> well, if you skipped, I understand it's just for a joke. But if you skip the suffering part, you don't really... It doesn't feel like it matters, you know? I truly believe that all those runs where Subaru fucks up and it's the bad runs and he suffers and he makes mistakes, right? And he... It, it, it truly feels like because of that... Everything else matters even more. You shouldn't just be skipping it. Some people probably have a hard time watching those suffering moments, right? That I can get for sure. Some people genuinely cannot stomach watching Subaru just do such vile shit. But for me, it's just interesting to see a main character of an anime do things that a main character in other animes would never do. And it just makes them feel more real and more complex. Ah! That's Subaru. Oops. And that's the video, man. I think that the best part of the video was this joke right here. With the... <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> but other than that, half the video was just glazing. With the most surface level glaze. And the, the, <laughs> the other half was just... <sighs> Basically, he says the characters don't matter. And he... The driving, the driving factor of Subaru loving Amelia and chasing after, it just seems pointless to him. For sure I get it, but I also understand why he loves Amelia like that, even though I, I acknowledge that it's stupid. I don't know, I feel like these criticisms come from a person that watched this anime at 2x speed to fucking make garbage tier list and fucking summer, spring, winter, fall, the anime to whatever, you know what I'm fucking talking about, but hey, please go give Google likes. Check out his channel if you haven't, and I'll see you at the next time.